Good afternoon, campers. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Got a couple things to talk about today. First, I'm gonna finally show you some pictures of the Pro Monkey Chopper. So we'll do that. I'm gonna throw them up here later. Uh, and then gotta figure out how to get it here because it doesn't run, because you know, that's the kind of investments I make. Things that have dry rotted tires and don't run. The only things I like. Okay, uh, that. Um, update on i got all the crap i need finally to put all this shit in my rv for uh sturgis some of you are triggered now because i said that um and then i want to talk about a viewer's situation recently and how it made me think of a fun list of stuff to learn if you're looking at joining an organization of any kind that involves room rooms okay we'll be back So first, I'm gonna sort of announce the final purchase is done on uh, the Pro Monkey Chopper. So I did a video months ago where good, good buddy of mine uh, and brother has this uh, chopper that he built, you know, 20 years ago. So it's an it's an old 883 Sportster with a uh, uh, 1200 kit, supposedly Buell heads, but like the old Buell heads, you know, uh, on it. So it's a runs like a rape tape 1200 Sportster. Um, that's sitting on a Paco frame with a coffin tank and a nice long front end. Da, 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 da. It's a skinny style. I, it's it's all it's right down my you know alley as far as the the overall look and feel. But I want to make changes to it and bring it. I was gonna say bring it current. We're not bringing it current. We're sending it back. We're gonna send it back to the '60s. Right now it's a purplish blue color, which is not a bad color. It's just not me. Um, and there's a big bubble developing on the tank as it is, so that's gonna pop, and we're gonna start over again. I think we're gonna do the old John Deere Blitz Black. You haven't heard of that? It's like a hot rodder's you know, secret. You can rattle can something with Blitz Black because it's engine paint and it looks fantastic. But anyway, so that'll be here sometime soon. Uh, I gotta figure out how to get it over here because it's too long for the bed on my truck. It's long. <laughs> and uh, my enclosed bike trailer is gone. It's in Missouri because the old man took his trike and went up to St. Louis with it because he's going on a 4,000 mile trip to the Grand Canyon and stuff before he goes to Sturgis. So he's got my enclosed trailer up there. And I really just don't want to pull out my 36 foot RV that's a toy hauler just to go pick up a bike and bring it 20 something minutes. So we're trying to figure out an alternative solution in the meantime to get it over here, but whatever. It doesn't run anyway. It's not a big rush. So that's going to go right there uh, and we'll tear it down together on videos I will break things not know what I'm doing and cause lots of damage to the bike it's gonna be great so we'll do that together uh, and I will have been throwing up photos of it as it sits right now and you'll see what I mean the color I'm not crazy about it already has black like powder coat black wheels and forks which is really current so I might leave that even though it's not my thing or I might go spokes I don't know we'll we'll figure that out together but I want to know your thoughts and anything you see that you would change and how let me know. For example, it has a Kyriakon hypercharger on it. No offense. I hate those. I just don't like it. I don't know why. I don't like the look of it. So it's probably going to be a little teardropish, you know, pretty soon, this, that, and the other. So that kind of stuff. What do you see that you liked or didn't like and didn't liked? Liked or didn't liked? Whatever, I'm leaving it. Uh, and then comment down below uh, what you think we should change and what we should do together. Um, other thing is the dudes at Rhino sent me more stuff and before i even show this um if what you're doing right now is like emailing me to tell me i'm a sellout um i'm gonna stop you and just tell you to kiss my white irish ass let's just insert that right here um because i needed this stuff <laughs> legitimately because my dad has all the stuff i had now in st louis and I need 16 straps to hold down that bike and that bike and this golf cart. And I needed axle tie downs for the golf cart and some other stuff I needed because of tire pressure issues you have when you're going north and south and north and south, up and down. Not north and south, it's up and down. Jesus Christ, I live at sea level. And when you go up to South Dakota, you end up many thousands of feet above that. All of a sudden tires are all zapped. So tire pressures are an issue, not on the bike so much, but on the truck and the RV because uh, Tires that are uninflated on RVs tend to overheat and come from all together. 
and you have a bad day on the highway. So monitoring tire pressures and all that crap's a constant thing I gotta do. And Rhino makes stuff for that that I didn't know. So they sent me some stuff. So let's uh, be back when I show you what they sent me. So as I mentioned, I needed 16 tie downs, uh, right? 18 tie downs <laughs> no 16 so six six four uh six per bike just because i i'm anal retentive and i don't want damage on stuff and more straps they don't eat anything as my grandfather used to say what does it hurt it doesn't eat nothing so six stripes per bike six straps per bike and then four on the uh on the golf cart and i needed to buy that stuff but i reached out to rhino first and said hey I already have bought your stuff. Like I bought the Rhino soft ties that you put over your bars and stuff over the years. I, I bought all that stuff from them in the past. And I was like, would you want to maybe fill me back up with straps and stuff and fill me back up? That's gonna, the comments are gonna be terrible. Anyway, um, would you want to, would you want to send me that? And they were like, yeah, cool. You know, so they sent me a ton of their heavy duty straps. Um, they also sent me really cool things, like four tie downs for the axles on this guy and then some other stuff. So what we have sitting here, is these are the packs of straps i haven't unpacked them all one pack is here in the case comes with a bag isn't that cool uh and then and here are the uh axle straps they're just a strap with a heavy metal loop on the end that you toss around the axle and then use a strap to hold it down uh and then they sent me a tire pressure gauge which i didn't know they make those that's cool 100 pounds which are 150 150 psi which is good because my my truck, my RV are all 80 pounds. Those of you with half tons are like, don't do that. No, really, it's 80 pounds on an F-250 and it's 80 pounds on the tires on my RV. So got to keep them up to that to maintain handling and heat and all this stuff is a pain. If you RVers out there, you know what I'm talking about. But they sent me this, which is cool, that I didn't even really make this kind of stuff. They sent me, basically, you all know what it is. It's not like it's... Do, 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 do. Come on, come on, stop. All right. So 100 PSI inflator for my compressor, you know, which is really cool. I didn't know they made one of those. Look at that. Pretty slick. So it'll be an easy way to plug her onto the tires on the RV, on the bikes in the truck, and then hit it and set it to where it needs to be and unhook because I, I roll with a, uh, a pancake compressor and a grill because I'm a fat guy. No, and a pancake compressor um that i can keep everything aired upright it's a it's a serious deal it's not such a big deal if your tires on your bike aren't the end of the world but if your tires are under or overflated on your truck when you're pulling fifteen thousand pounds or on your rv that has some of your most prized possessions <laughs> inside them of course not my wife and daughter i'm talking about the the bikes and the stuff you want to make sure that stuff doesn't come together so thanks again to rhino for this stuff that i needed to buy anyway so uh, the code is MONKEY, capital M, all caps, all caps, MONKEY, and that's 10% off. So you can go to Rhino USA and order that stuff. So thanks again. And again, those of you who are like, you're a sellout, please go screw yourself. <laughs> please. All right. Um, I needed this stuff anyway. They sent it to me. Big deal. They're not paying me. Now I'm not going to do the finger. That's too far. Now, um. But the topic, the main topic of today, what happened was, what happened was, as they say in South Florida, um, the organization I'm a part of, which is not an MC, we're a more, motorcycle organization, it's different. We're structured the same and all that other stuff and, and, and high levels of discipline and all that kind of stuff, but we are not an MC. Don't, don't, don't misconstrue, right? Um, but one of the viewers, figured out what that organization is and was like, I gotta do this, I've been thinking about it for a while anyway. And he found uh, his local chapter and is going to his first meeting far away from here uh, in a few weeks. And he was like, I don't wanna screw up when I go to the meeting for the organization that you know a whole hell of a lot about. Um, so what should I not do when I go to that meeting? And I was like, sure. So I emailed them. I'm like, you know, these are the things that I have seen when new people come in that rub me the wrong way and really rub everyone the wrong way. And there's a lot of rubbing. But anyway, um, that's, that's, that's irritating, right? Don't do these things. And I emailed them and I was like, you know what? These are universal things. I guarantee these things map over to motorcycle clubs of whatever level and organization. Um, 
I, I'm sure of it because this guy, these guys are pretty well known. Like they, it's a, it's kind of personality traits that pop out when someone's excited about joining something, right? So five things that you should probably avoid, not probably, certainly in my organization, don't do it, but in others, I guarantee they're just as much of a pain in the ass. So five things you should not do if you're looking into going into a new organization, club, group, whatever it may be. So number one, I have notes again, so get ready. Um, number one, I've said this a million times, this applies to life, but not just going to a, a club or organization meeting. This is life. I learned this from an old boss of mine years ago when I was a young, eager, even more of an obnoxious ass than I am today. And that is, do not broadcast when you should be tuning in. The story he told was one of his buddies who was a, uh, just got back from Vietnam, <laughs> got into a bar fight, and the next day he was like, why are you have black eyes, what happened? And he said I was broadcasting when I should have been tuning in. <laughs> so that, that, you know, that whole thing. Don't broadcast, you should be tuning in. And what that means is listen, don't weigh in yet. And this is not just your first meeting or, or gathering. This is like you've been around a little bit. Don't, don't weigh in yet. Uh, get a feeling for the group and see if you're interested in going further first before you start trying to be a part of it. Um, and each group's gonna have their own rules. You know, you might be told right on the front end, shut the F up. Not the case in my group, but you might hear that right on the front end. Um, don't get caught up in the being a part of something. So don't like let it go that it doesn't, you don't feel like a fit and they don't feel like a fit for you. If you get that feeling, trust it. You know, don't go caught up in the, but I want to be a part of it, but I want to be a part of it. Don't hang out if it's not a fit for you and a fit for them. Um, so orgs and clubs, and one of the reasons why you should not necessarily just jump up and say, I have a suggestion. I mean, besides the fact that it's a little presumptuous as they smart people would say, um, but organizations and clubs have bylaws and rules, regulations, things that have gone wrong in the past that they know about. And there's just a lot of knowledge and stuff. And besides the whole point is you shouldn't presume to know better than they do. Um, there's probably a reason why they haven't done yet the thing that you're talking about or why they can't do that thing. So hang out a while. If you've got an idea, make a mental note, hold on to it for a bit, and you might learn over the next couple of months the reason why that thing is impossible because it either has been done and went wrong in the past or there's a rule that says specifically you can't do that thing. You know, So that someone wrote many, many years ago, insert the scene from Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, where the guys bring out the old book, that, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, hang out for a few months. You might learn the reason why, and if you can't see any reason why your idea doesn't fit, after you got, got to know everyone and they trust you a bit, then maybe share the idea, but not on the front end. Um, this one irritates the hell out of me personally, uh, and I'm sure some of you out there. Don't be flashy. Um, you see dudes that go to the first meeting or gathering of an organization, and they throw money around or they throw around sort of influence that they think they have. They're buying a bunch of drinks at the bar. That's not so bad. Now do that. Buy a lot of drinks. Buy everyone a drink. Do that. No. <laughs> no, I mean like if somebody's, they're talking as a group about a problem or a challenge they have, don't be the guy that's like, I'll pay for that. I know a guy who could do that. I can take care of that. that, that don't just, it's, don't be a show off. Don't be like, I can fix all things for all people because I am wealthy or I know everyone or don't be that guy. That's, that's a little irritating. And you take chips out of your bucket, as they say, when that happens and you start going, yeah, I don't trust that guy. You know what I mean? Um, also, they probably aren't going to listen to you if you're really new because they don't know if you're going to hang around. So they don't, you know, don't, just don't be the flashy dude. Um, this is just a good tip. Identify the officers of the organization. Make a mental note of who they are. They may or may not have a title patch on their cut. Not always. You know, not every organization does that. Some of them hate that. But there might be. And look for that. You're looking for the president, the vice president, the secretary, the treasurer, and the sergeant at arms. You're looking for those five. And organizations vary. There might be other ones, but those five are pretty standard sort of positions. So identify who they are, and and the the reason why is you don't want to bug them. If you need to talk or be brought before the sergeant at arms to have a discussion, the sort of initial assessment, 
probably not the first time you ever met them, but if that needs to happen, they'll initiate, initiate that. If you, being an outsider or brand new to something, are present at something, whether it be a meeting or a whatever, um, if you're there, it's probably open, which means there's a lot of people there, which means those five dudes are under a lot of pressure uh, from a lot of people to answer questions, handle an issue. I mean, they're gonna be busy as hell. Anytime there's an open event, those five people uh, have a lot on them, you know? So identify them, know who they are, and, and just kind of watch and listen to them when appropriate. Don't listen in on their conversations, but if they say something, tune in. But don't stay out of their way. They're probably really busy, certainly if this is like your first time there. Um, this is a big one. And I can speak to this because I've heard this from a million people. Uh, don't get your feelings hurt. And yes, keyboard commandos are already out there talking about needing a safe space and, and you know, snowflakes and this, that, and the other. Those who are serious out there, I know what I'm talking about. Don't, don't get your feelings hurt because no one talks to you. Uh, don't get your feelings hurt if people look away from you. Uh, because the reason why is if you're new or newer, they're not gonna invest in you personally because people come and go all the time. You might be the greatest human being that anyone's ever known. You might be you know, perfect for this organization. You might be brilliant and a future leader someday and all this stuff, but they don't know that yet. And really, you shouldn't know that. I'm just saying this could be true. Uh, you know, the, the, the state president of every organization or club was once new, right? But still, they didn't know that dude at the time. So just be aware of the fact that if I am at one of my meetings and uh, someone brand new that I've never seen before in my life walks up and, and wants to start a conversation, I am not gonna talk to that person very long. I'm not gonna be rude because it's just not me, but I'm not gonna talk to that person a long time because I don't know if I'll ever see them again and I don't wanna invest the time. So a personal story about that, uh, I remember um, witnessing a newer member of an organization, the organization, uh, approaching the president of a state at a giant gathering. And the president of the state wasn't rude. They weren't disrespectful. They just kept the conversation to three words and moved on. Like it was just like, and I know that dude was like, oh man, I, that was not cool. He didn't talk to me at all. He didn't hang out, whatever. It's like, it's because you're brand new. You're brand new. You're, you're, you, everyone knows who you are. You've been around that long, but he doesn't know if you're in it for the long haul. He doesn't know if he's gonna see you in five years. He doesn't know if you're gonna be taking on a serious position, role, project, effort, whatever, and get it done and just really show yourself to be a solid dude. He doesn't know that yet. And so he is not gonna personally invest in you. It's just, just unfortunately the way it's gonna be until you've proven yourself. And this is just, this is not about club life, organizations, this, any other, this is just life. You know, like you're not gonna invest a bunch of time in someone that you don't know if they're gonna be a part of your world for very long. Um, and then the last one is don't overcommit yourself. Don't go into uh, a, a, an organization meeting, club meeting, whatever it is, and right off the bat, volunteer to do everything. There's several reasons here. From their perspective, you lose credibility again. If you're like, I'll do that, I'll do that, I'll do this, I'll do If you just volunteer to do everything, you lose a lot of credibility because they don't think that necessarily you're gonna follow through on anything. If you say you're gonna do it all, you're gonna master none of it, you know? Uh, it might even fail. There's a car just driving slowly past my house. That's That makes me comfortable. Anyway, I live on a cul-de-sac and cars just slow. Like none of these houses are for sale, so you're not shopping. What? What are you doing? Anyway, I can't stand civilians, normal people. Um, so, and this isn't gonna be much of a problem in reality for you. It just might, again, get your feelings hurt because if you're new to the organization, they're gonna limit your involvement. They're not gonna let you agree to do everything. They're not gonna let you say this, 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 this because they need to make sure that stuff happens and it gets done. So they're not gonna allow you to be a part of the thing you're saying you're gonna do because they need to make sure it gets done and you're new. But the second reason why you don't want to overcommit, and I think this is an important one, and this is a long-term play situation, is you don't want to burn out. In, in my organization, burnout's a problem because there's a lot of work to be done. Um, some of it's emotional, some of it's very difficult, very challenging, uh, and weigh on you personally. And if someone says, I'll do this, 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 and this, and this, 
we don't allow it. And the reason why is because um, they'll burn out and then they won't do anything. They'll end up leaving or they'll end up uh, 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 just failing at it because they've committed themselves way too much and they try to get too much done. And that comes from a good place sometimes. That comes from someone who's like, you know, I, I, I want to accomplish these things because I believe in the mission of this organization or the group or the, you know, the, 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 uh, the brotherhood or this and the other. I believe in these, so I want to make these things happen. And they really want to, but then they take on too much. And they end up failing at it. And that causes bad feelings, and conflicts and problems and this and the other. So short story long, just don't overcommit. And that's after you've been there a while. They're not going to let you do anything first meeting, but if you've been there a little while, uh, just don't overcommit. Try and find something you can do and be really good at that thing and then see where else you're needed. But try and pick what can I actually accomplish realistically and then they'll respect that and let you do that. And with leadership, so you're not going to be unsupervised as it is, but that's it. That's all I want to talk about today was how to not screw up if you're going to, uh, to look at joining a new organization, and that came from this dude who emailed me saying, I'm going to join yours and join, I'm not going to join. I'm going to look at maybe potentially, maybe someday <laughs> if I've earned it after my year and a half of training and whatnot, you know, then maybe. Uh, so that I just wanted to help him not make a mistake. And I thought this is universal, man. Anyone who goes to any organization, you could do, you could apply these, these thoughts to a hog chapter. You could go to a hog chapter and blab your mouth right when you shouldn't uh and you don't understand why they can't do the thing that you say you do you can go in throwing money around and look like a jerk um you could go up and interrupt the well, i don't know what they call their president they have a, a, a whatever that person is go up and interrupt that person when they're busy and go out who the hell is this guy i don't want to you know um not get the attention you think you deserve from the leaders of the organization on your first visit and get your feelings hurt that could happen at a hog chapter um and then you could overcommit yourself to a million different things and fail all, at all of it. So that's what I mean by, I'm not talking about hog. I'm not, I'm not, I don't even, am I even a member? Well, when you buy a bike, they give it to you. I'm not a hog member. But anyway, all those things could go bad just at those meetings. So um, comment down below what else have you seen? You know, a new dude shows up and does stuff stupid. <laughs> what have you seen? Comment that down below. I will read the comment and I will respond. Uh, and from there, take care of each other out there. We'll talk real soon. Bye.